Hey, my name is Steve Diester Cruz, and I'm from member of IEE from Luxembourg and the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. We will use zero uh, synthetic data sets for sceneries in the passenger compartment in order to analyze machine learning based approaches for their uh, generalization performance. We created 25,000 sceneries across 10 different vehicles, and we generated beautiful sceneries, RGB images. Uh, race communication with the red images and death maps. We also generated morning boxes, key points of post estimation, instant segmentation masks, and classification labels for each individual seat. Now, when you train a machine learning model in one seemingly criteria, then the resulting model will perform poorly in a different criteria. The reason for this is that the model takes too much information from the background into account for its decision taking. Because it and we saw one of very similar backgrounds to the training. During the design process, we made sure to use uh, different exterior environments, uh, people, child seats, and objects for the training for the test of it. In that way, we can test the generalization performance in two difficulty levels. So first, we can train a model in one vehicle and test how well it generalizes to new objects but in the car to train on. Second, we can uh, test the generalization to uh, a different vehicle interior, but for objects seen during training. <coughs> and the most difficulty test is the generalization to previously unknown objects in an unknown environment. We then took real infrared images, which you can see in the bottom row, and reconstructed those sceneries in our simulation, which you can see in the top row. We then found the model on our synthetic data and apply the model to both real and synthetic images, and we get a similar performance. Which is why we believe that investigations and insights of Sphero are also transferable to real applications. We also host a public evaluation server, on which you can submit your results for the test set, and we provide a detailed overview of the model's performance across all the different vehicles and classes. Similar to Coco, we have a few user submissions. At the moment, you can submit results for classification, semantic and instant segmentation, object detection, and key point estimation. And for each of those benchmarks, we provide a public data board, which gives details about which data was used during training, but also how well the model performs at each individual class. And if you want to, you can also make your results using the public data board. Thank you very much for your attention, and please visit me at post number two for questions or discussions. So we know that deep learning have been successful in acquiring in many areas. Uh, more recently, a dense plan was proposed to boost the feature use to reduce the uh, model complexity. However, um, many uh, feature use contribute uh, very little to the final performance. Uh, so several work have been uh, attempted to reduce the uh, dense connections, uh, such work to improve the uh, sparse times. Inspired by attention, model, uh, attention mechanism, in this paper we uh, design a kind of greater attention uh, to the back to the future and require to reuse features. This is the overall architecture of our uh, algorithm. Uh, it consists of three dense blocks, and each dense block includes several composite variables with dense connections. The main difference between our work and the existing work is the processing of the composite variable. So, um, our novel composite variable includes key, two key components. Uh, one is a dense resident aggregation, and the other is a layer attention module. In terms of the uh, dense um, aggregation, um, it's uh, motivated by the residue and dense connections, we introduce a novel strategy of uh, feature aggregation that is not only take advantage of the power of the residue, uh, earning the investment, but also preserve the merit of feature reuse in dense net. Recuperation operation is imposed on the features from previous areas. The area attention module is proposed to uh, express a model area uh, interrelationship and determine 
German literature released by the uh, current composer player. So instead of directly applying global average to him, uh, we uh, set up three layers before global average. So this So here is the result. So this table shows that our uh, performance is consistently uh, uh, outperform existing ones uh, and also needs a fewer time to do. And if you want to try to go back to that different preliminary head of that, I will be presenting how I'll explore the DLS as an outcome tracking, the detection of the collaborative. Long term tracking is particularly challenging with the stocks that interact with the procedure of interest. There are some significant updated situations as they go out of field. We hypothesize the crucial appetite, crucial aspects for long term tracking, namely the detection of the collaborative and the collaborative. Uh, so, for the detection, it is essential to isolate the detection ability of a tractor from its practicality. We propose a setup for this here. Given the sequence, we extract this short subsequence, we make the cut in the subsequence, and measure the performance of the setup after the cut. We now demonstrate an example of this uh, scheme. Uh, so, part is in the case, so the tractors will do the detection ability and able to uh, detect the target after this. Uh, this uh, uh, moving on to recoveries, it's important to distinguish between these general recoveries of the tractor and the recoveries that happen uh, accidentally. We find uh, two types of chance based recoveries. One where the tractor tracks a alternate object, and uh, the recovery happens when these unit is set. The second is when the tractor completely freezes and the uh, tracking resumes with the object returns in, into its predictions. We will now demonstrate examples for this here. Uh, so here the tracker starts off by uh, tracking the direct object. Uh, however, once it switches to the incorrect object, it continues to act the incorrect object. The recovery happens only when uh, the ground truth essentially runs into the uh, uh, tracker's predictions. Uh, the second type of recovery is when the tracker completely freezes, and uh, here the recovery happens only because the ground truth target essentially walks into the tracker's predictions. So we formalize experiments in uh, computer metrics to uh, calculate this. Our main uh, conclusions are that <coughs> trackers which are trained fully offline uh, frequently tend to track alternate objects, and the ones which make online model updates are uh, frequently fees. And we also show that the impact of this is very significant in the tracking performance. Finally, we move on to the reliability. Uh, reliability or continuity in trackers crucial, but its existing measures such as success and precision do not account for this. We propose a new metric, the longest subsequence metric. So given the idea of stack threshold, we compute the longest subsequence that track or track, and then we plot our heat map, and the mean of the heat map brings us to it. This allows us to use the inference. Our key database for two we have a generic communication experiment that can be performed by any uh, person proposing a new tracker. We have identified two uh, new modes of recovery, and we have a new metric which captures the reliability aspect of the track. For so more details, please visit this is the track. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk The Role of Elephant of Object Detection. Open Center. Myself, Akshay Ranthamisha. This work has been performed at the Vision and Security Technology Lab at UCCS under the guidance of Dr. Manuel Dr. Jonathan Manchura, and Dr. Terence Kipur. Let us take a minute to understand how the problem of object detection is currently approached. Let us consider why has the infinite living space of all possible object classes in the world? From this infinite living space, a subset of known objects K are used for training. This subset represents the 20 classes in Pastel VOC or the 80 classes in MS Coco, such as person, dog, cat, keyboard, mouse, chair, sandwiches, etc. Along with the known object instances, 
We use a variety of unlabeled objects during training. Example, toaster oven, foster, cutlery, and basket POC, and USB stick, plates, blankets, and MS Coco. These objects represent the red cell, B, and hence were considered as backgrounds during training. Unfortunately, the current object protection protocols only focus on the known classes A and the backgrounds B, both during training and testing ignoring the wire minus P window space. An open set protocol attempts to explicitly test on not just A and B, but also U, which contains objects that were never seen during training. Please stop by a poster to know more. We analyze the performance of various state-of-the-art object detectors, such as faster RCN and RetinaNet and Yolo B2 on specific records. We deduce that even though some detectors give comparable performance under standard testing scenarios, they produce valid results in open set conditions. In order to understand the impact of an unknown object on a detector, we introduce a new evaluation metric called the Wilderness Impact Curve. It studies the effect on an object detector's performance for varying number of objects from Y minus T. More details can be found at our poster. Thank you. Our poster number is 6.
Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Francois Arnaud from KAIST, and I'm happy today to present our paper entitled Deep PTC, Deep Set Calibration for Pantheon Camera. So basically, camera calibration consists in the estimation of the internal parameter of the camera in order to, uh, basically, which map basically the projection of the 3D world onto the uh, image coordinate system. Uh, those parameters are essential if you want to do tasks such as trigger construction, visual inventory, etc. So usually to estimate those parameters, you use a uh, large number of images that you require from a known target uh, to actually compute those parameters. But this is uh, sometimes complicated, sometimes you don't have those type of calibration targets in your image, and uh, that's the reason why like, many works uh, focus on this type of problem, to how you can estimate those parameters using any natural image, set of natural images, let's say. There are like traditional techniques or different techniques recently that target this problem. So in this paper, we try to estimate the intrinsic parameter of a purely rotating camera, which has the ability to zoom, and which can have like very strong radio distortion. So we try to solve that problem using a pair of images, and to basically regress this parameter using the term. So to solve this problem, we basically develop like, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, like one of the main uh, difficulty here is like if you want to train a deep neural network to solve such type of problem, is you will need a large number of annotated data to basically uh, estimate those parameters. So we took advantage of a large scale uh, parameter data, data set from which we can generate a very large number of pair of images with various focal lengths and radio distortion. So to do so, we use the spherical projection model, which is relatively simple to uh, inverse, which is not always the case for polygonal models. And concretely, to actually estimate the, the intrinsic parameter of a pair of images, we develop uh, a novel like uh, networking architecture that we call neural Sandy's architecture, where we basically try to enforce a bidirectional constraint. Let's say, for instance, we estimate the intrinsic parameter of your two views to the image one to two. We want this parameter to basically be uh, the same as the parameter if you inverse the images, like the parameter between image two to one. So uh, we also like uh, show a large number of experiments again traditional and current techniques which shows the effectiveness of our methods and also demonstrate uh, the, the, our technique with qualitative results like Panorama generation for instance um, and you will see more results if you visit our poster. Uh, this is one of the quite rare techniques for a camera set calibration using the journey, at least one of the first. Uh, so if you're curious about that, you can visit our poster. It's going to be the poster number 8 and I will be pleased to answer your question. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Yannick Chima from the University of Kansas. Uh, today, I am pleased to present my work, the self self normality module, uh, and network architecture plugin for learning on some figures. So, in this work, we are motivated by the fact that for most famous cloud trained models, um, the angular distribution of figures or that which are heavy and uh, behave similarly in Gaussian arches um, and uh, uh, center is 90 degree and uh, small variances. So like in figure one, it uh, reveals that deep learning itself may have uh, some internal uh, mechanism, uh, mechanism to learn nearly orthogonal uh, filters, even without any external orthogonal regularization. So we propose to push the uh, mean and STD of a target at angular distribution towards prior 90 and zero as close as possible. So in details, our algorithm is to extract the filter outputs from every convolutional layers and estimate the mean and STD for their uh, filter angular distribution. And uh, um, we use this information as a path to determine the regularized loss option. And for the results, we evaluated our algorithm on point called 2D image classification. Uh, and we have four basic settings the night training, which trains the mob network without any regularization, and the conventional training, which trains the network with weight K dropouts and batch normalization, and two more uh, state of the art regular letters like the sway and also uh, that. The first we showed the results uh, comparison on uh, model 40. 
the default setting and three other three situations with a peak learning rate of 0.01 and less training samples to 440 and small batch class of two. Uh, we use all the solid, uh, so, so we see all the solid bright lines show the thoughts of our algorithm. And from the readout table of model net 40, our algorithm always has the best performance, especially for the combination of our self, our method and the night training. As for the hours plus CT, uh, it seems that this effect is neutralized by our regular, uh, regular letters, like the influence on gradient from batch normalization. And for the videos on the two uh, point calls on analyst, we uh, conclude that our regular can work well not only on well defined setting but also analyst team scenes. And our algorithm includes both naive training and commercial training significantly on both convergence, speed, and accuracy. So, which indicates its better stability and generalization ability for optimizing deep. The problem is, is, is as follows. 
We uh, studied a holistically nested edge detection model, which is a formerly state-of-the-art model for edge detection based on the VGD16 architecture. On the right, you can see the output of HD. Uh, we attacked this model using a uh, state-of-the-art um, adversarial attack method called momentum iterative fast reanimate sign method, which you can see on the right. We consider four attack variants. On the left, you can see the output of HED on a standard image. The first variant uh, performs gradient ascent on the true ground truth label. The second attempts to invert the ground truth label. The third attempts to remove edges from the image. And the fourth attempts to create edges in the image. The results are promising uh, in that the attacks reduce the F score of HED significantly on the BSDS 500 dataset. Moreover, the precision recall curves of, of HED are inverted, suggesting that the model is producing incorrect outputs. The more important consequence of this work is that these attacks blindly transfer to other tasks. In particular, um, ImageNet classification models like VGG16 and ResNet architectures suffer large drops in accuracy um, on these attack images. Furthermore, uh, the Deep Lab V3 Plus model um, suffers a drop in MIOU. It's important to note that certain attack variants transfer better. So here are some results. Uh, you can come to me afterward to, to see them. Uh, and so some conclusions. Adversarial examples aren't unique to quote-unquote hard tasks like classification, um, in that they may be an intrinsic property of deep networks or how we are treating them. Furthermore, uh, these edge-based attacks transfer. One, one interpretation is that these attacks are targeting the lowest layers of these models, which are shared across many architectures. Um, one possible future question is, can we make these edge detectors more robust? Thank you, and please read our paper and visit the poster afterward. Thank you.
poster. And uh, our poster is number 12. And I'll leave you with this uh, brief uh, demo that I have the longer version of our poster. Thank you. So once we had that figured out, we then created a rig for 
consistency. So for each of the scenes, we created uh, this kind of bar that we could set up so they'd be the exact same placement and same spacing so that we could have uh, consistency throughout every scene. We then focused on ground truth, which was obtained through three Doppler radars, and they have a conical field view. So we position them uh, fairly perpendicular to the object of interest of motion. Um, and all the data was, of course, synchronized via the start script so that we could have timestamps uh, with the respective device's data. The radar accuracy was also verified with physics equations and uh, physics known setups. So we would do things like dropping objects, uh, incline plane objects, or just rolling an object down a hill, and uh, as you can see, pendulum objects as well. So finally, we got to use the data, which we did with a motion detector, which was pixel change per frame to help initialize the CSRT tracker, which would track it through the RGB frames. We then used the depth data to find a 3D location in a meaningful metric. For us, we used meters. And uh, we inputted this with the timestamp information into a common filter to get the velocity vector. We then calculated the magnitude of the velocity from there and evaluated using mean absolute deviation against both the radar and physics ground truth. And though we achieved fairly respectable results, there's still clearly much work to be done. So please swing over to our post number 14 and send me an email. Thank you.
and general coherence for addition free variability. So now let's have a look at Spargo based pipeline. So we see that uh, we take video in frames as input to our pipeline, which is simultaneously passed to object detector and uh, say that's the addition module. The object detector produces common boxes and class labels, uh, thus creating object level correspondences. The saliency addition module computes saliency maps for each frame uh, of the video. In the order this module, we compute the overlay position for each label in the frame based on the object level correspondences, uh, saliency maps, and the order based module. Finally, we also use a uh, temporal coherence spec module to obtain a different field. So we use overlay partitions to handle uh, the proximity constraints. We choose the C points of the verbal partition as the centroids of the bounding boxes generated by object detector. Uh, the verbal formulation ensures that the label is placed close to the corresponding object due to the inherent property of the verbal partition. So uh, on the screen we see the different masks which we include in predicting the agency maps. Diamond realistic improves the user experience and central bias models the human eye fixation uh, tendency to cluster towards the screen center. Furthermore, we minimize the occlusion of salient region occupied by the labels by reducing the label occlusion over salient symmetry, which is the average salient intensity. We majorly used uh, TM dataset, town hall, and other algorithm datasets for evaluating our results. The dataset contains a variety of videos ranging from TV shows, documentaries, movie clips. Uh, and pedestrians walking on the street. So I now present some of the results of smart open based framework. Uh, on the top left, we have the original video. On the top right, uh, a computed salience map. Bottom left uh, shows the lane, length of placement, and bottom right is our output. We also analyze the output of different temporal coherence methods for jitter free overlay placement, uh, which you see on the screen right now. In conclusion, we have a visual saliency based intelligent overlay placement framework which could be used across uh, different applications for spatial temporal localities. For more information, please visit our poster number uh, 60. Thank you for your attention. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Judy Jiang from USC. I'm going to present our latest work on class incremental learning. So the world is changing all the time. In, in the real world vision applications, we are interested in augmenting the capability of our model and learning new concepts over the time. So we study the problem in incrementally learning new concepts without retraining the entire model. So the major challenge for the incremental learning is to resolve the dilemma between the catastrophic forgetting on the old classes and the underfitting for the new data. Previous work usually fine-tuned the model with new training data with some regularization terms. However, this paradigm leads to a, a intrinsic bias towards either the old classes or the new classes. So uh, instead, we propose a more balanced training strategy and then we use some other cheap substitutes for the training data. We call our method uh, the uh, Deep Model Consolidation, or DMC for short. So the idea is to first train a brand new model out of the tra new training data of the new classes. Then we combine this new model with the original model using this DMC module to obtain a single compact model for the inference. Uh, and uh, during this consolidation stage, we use unlabeled authored data to, uh, to substitute the training data, to distill uh, the knowledge from the teacher models. The merits of DMC include its efficiency and uh, uh, low constraint. So we don't assume the observed data to have the same distribution as our targeted data. And uh, there is no model architecture as constraints. So we conducted uh, many experiments on different benchmarks. DMC surpassed the previous methods by a large margin in terms of the overall accuracy and uh, the forgetting effect on the learning task. We studied how the auxiliary data uh, affect our final performance, and we surprisingly found out the scene images and the texture images 
are useful enough for the classification test. We also went beyond the classification and worked for the object detection and proposed a specific training strategy. And it goes state of the art for the object detection test on the Pascal dataset. To sum up, DMC provides a illuminating perspective for the incremental learning and a compelling results on many uh, data sets. Please come to our poster at number 17 for more details. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. 
learned this function allows a DD offsetting distance, and we learned that the dynamics using a dynamic incomplete graph structure. So to begin, to the figure to the left, we record the distances between each pair of pedestrians along the time steps, and we project these distances using softmax layer to initialize the adjacency matrix, which is our main mechanism to judge the relationships. However, in the full pipeline, this adjacency matrix judge how pedestrians are influenced by each other. So along predicting the positional trajectories for pedestrians, we also calculate the velocities in this unit and predict the future velocities and add them up to the future locations to generate a new set of future trajectories called a star. And we evaluated uh, several aspects like the course duration of the predicted trajectory to understand how our model perceived the interaction and how pedestrians are impacted by each other. So even for the future velocity range, we noticed that the model understood that pedestrians should not cross each other's um, uh, personal space. So, uh, more details can be found in our posting discussion. And our post number is 19, so thank you for listening. Good afternoon. So my name is François Bramond. I'm from Emilia. This work is done with a young rank, uh, Antissa Donsheva, and the Kremlin Ski for Warsaw uh, University. So the objective is to create to generate videos given a single image and from uh, some categories here in the facial expression. And so the challenge is to keep the appearance and the soft motion throughout the videos. So for that, we propose an architecture from an encoder decoder. So the encoder uh, takes the image and, uh, and uh, encode it. So this is the orange layer. And we combine it with the condition, so the green layer, and with some uh, motion noise, the red uh, part. And so we have after for the decoder five blocks where we increase the spatial and temporal dimension. So where we combine the motion in blue with the appearance and the condition. And so the trick is to, with this uh, skip connection, where we keep the appearance throughout the videos. At the end, we get, we get a sequence of 32 frames of each image is uh, 64 by 64. So the key point is this uh, spatial temporal fusion. So each drop is uh, one uh, spatial temporal fusion. So we check how it inputs the uh, appearance, and that is combined with the, the motion and then with the condition, which is added for each uh, image. So how do we implement this uh, special temporal fusion? So for that, we use a transpose 1 plus 2D convolution. So we uh, use uh, M1 plus 1 temporal convolution for assembling the temporal dimension, and 1 2D convolution to example the special dimension. So we use two discriminator, one for the image and one for the videos. So for the image, we uh, sample n frames, and we say if it's a rare effect, and we do the same thing for the, the video. So here are some uh, visual results. So we compare our work on the four data set. Two data set for uh, uh, facial expression, and two data set for human action. And so what we need to look is uh, the smoothness of the motion and also the, the appearance that is conserved throughout the, the videos. So the image are a little bit small, so it's better to see uh, on the videos. On the facial expression, we can see that uh, the, the appearance is well kept throughout the video. So if you want more information, come to see me at the post. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Tomichan from UAC. As I told, my paper is about quantum mapping for image interpretation. So, as we know, it's famous of second. So, we will realize quantum mapping for comparative image interpretation. As you can see, we only use uh, one function to realize the bi directional mapping. So, 
this function is realized by a function called self and worth function, and this function also is implemented by deep context. So you can see uh, we give you a value from a domain from X, you will to the input Y, and also similarly you will to the other direction. So uh, you can see that in the cell then, uh, from X to Y prime, it's a one to many many, and from Y prime to the X prime, that function is uh, many to one many. But for our method, we will use one function G. That's uh, from x to y prime is a one to one mapping. From y prime to x prime, also one to one mapping. So this will guarantee one to one mapping properties. And this function, uh, it has a bidirectional uh, mapping properties. And in the loss function on message designs, uh, the upper loss is the same, and we have a two separate set loss for each direction of mapping. So, and also to optimize, we're going to optimize one function of B star. And for the cell then it needs to optimize two functions, G and F. So in this way we can make this mapping very specific and very accurate. And following the set of results. This is the result on the host uh, You can see the third column is our result. Uh, for example, the first first uh, row. And this is on the result on map apple and orange. Uh, also, third column is our result, is better than the baseline set K. And we also have a step one for a summer and winter. And sometimes the step end fails, and our result is uh, always uh, better than the step end. And also, we did uh, user studies, and we our, our result is the best than the step end and other results for the. And this is also we did a result on the cross domain medical image synthesis on MRI, T1, T2. I can see the third column and the last two. And this is also we have uh, experimental sensitivity data set. And later you see uh, our quantum results, especially uh, the results on the photo to label direction. We reached the uh, state of the result. For details, please come to my poster on 21. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon. Today I will talk about our work of VIP virtual putting for accelerating CN based image classification and object detection. My name is Zhuo Chen, and this, is, this work is a collaboration with Jilin Zhang, graduating from Carnegie Mellon University, advised by Professor Diana Marcelasco from University of Texas at Austin. Deep learning models have shown strong performance in visual learning tasks and uh, has been deployed in more and more mobile devices. However, they use strong latency and power constraints, and their mobile use cases, improving model efficiency becomes increasingly critical. Uh, virtual coding short for VIP is a technique that takes advantage of uh, pixel spatial redundancy. The basic block of VIP is to speed up convolution layers. Rather than using a small stride in common layers as shown in the path above, uh, we, we can use a bigger stride and then recover the feature map uh, through efficient linear interpolation as shown in the path below. So this greatly saves the number of convolutions performed and that speeds up the network and also reduces energy consumption. So uh, knowing how VIP works on one layer, we then apply it to each common layer of the network in a strategic way that optimizes for speed up and accuracy with approval of error bound. Further details will be discussed in my poster session. Uh, we test VIP extensively on various tasks, CNN models, data sets, and platforms. Here we list some of the key results. So measure on real platforms, VIP deliver, delivers one, uh, 2.1x speed up with 1.5% direct accuracy degradation in image depth classification of VGT16. It also delivers 1.8x speed up with only 0 0.025 uh, mean average precision drop in possible VOC object detection with faster RCU. It reduces mobile GQ and CQ energy consumption by up to 55% and 70% uh, respectively. Uh, also, VIP is a complementary to existing acceleration approaches that speeds up the thin net, which is already heavily compressed in 16 by 1.9x. 
So combining VIP and the compression uh, technique that leads up to a combined speed up of 5.23x on VGT16. So VIP will generate a set of CNN models with different speed, speed up and accuracy trade-offs. It provides a knob for machine learning practitioners to better accommodate the requirements of their tasks. Uh, so we are very excited to share more details of our work and please stop by our poster uh, is uh, 22. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your listening and if you have any questions, please contact the event.